Okay, in this video what we're going to do is take a look at your installation on your Windows XP computer and make sure that you have the Internet Information Services installed and if not we'll make sure to get it installed on your computer. Go ahead and click on your start button. From the start button we want to go to the control panel and in the control panel we're going to go to add or remove programs. It's within the add or remove programs window as you'll see once you click on it that we have the opportunity to add or remove Windows components. It's the third button down on the left there in the add remove programs window. So add remove Windows components is what we want to click on next. Depending on the speed of your computer that can take a moment or two. And then we get the uh, Windows components wizard window here and then you can see there's a list of various Windows components. The Windows components that are currently installed have a check in them. Those that are not installed do not have a check in the checkbox. You'll notice too that uh, like the one we want to select here, the Internet Information Services component is uh, or has a gray checkbox. And the reason for that is is that the Internet Information Services component has subcomponents and not all of the subcomponents have been selected and so that's the visual that we get when that situation occurs a gray checkbox so what we want to do because we want to take a look at what components you may or may not have installed here for the internet information services we want to have you select that component the internet information services now don't turn a checkbox or try to select by the checkbox because all that does is just turn it on and off what we'd like you to do is just click on the actual name of the component then click on the details button over here in the right because that's going to show us the subcomponents for that selected component so in the uh, subcomponents window for the internet information services now you can see what you do have installed there you need to have the common files turned on you need documentation uh, we won't be using FTP you can leave that turned off or on it doesn't really matter Front page 2000 server extensions we definitely want to have. And then this is a very important one, the Internet Information Services Snap-in. That is the management tool for the web server. We'll be taking a look at that uh, once we get it installed here. SMTP service, again, is optional. Allows you to send mail from a web page. And then this, of course, is another very important component. That is the web service itself, the HTTP server. So with the World Wide Web Service selected, it has subcomponents also so select it and then go to the details button there you see the uh, subcomponents of the World Wide Web service so we don't need to have the printers virtual directory turned on what that does is allow you to actually connect to and print to your printer at your home or office by remote control over the internet using a URL to reach your printer uh, we don't need the remote desktop web connection. We do need to have a scripts virtual directory. It's not imperative that that's created. It's just helpful. This is a, a good location to store our scripts in. And then here is the actual World Wide Web service itself. So let's make sure that we have the World Wide Web service and the scripts virtual directory turned on here. Click OK. At the next level up, we then have, uh, most importantly, the Internet Information Services Snap-in, the Front Page 2000 Server Extensions, the Documentation, and the Common Files. Those four items should be selected. Click OK. Back to the main page now, the Windows Component Wizard page. So now we've identified for that particular component, here's the subcomponents that we want to have in use. So we're going to click Next. It's going to ask perhaps for a CD to install the files on your computer at this point. If this is the first time that you've installed IIS on your system, then it definitely will ask for a CD. So have that uh, ready to go. Um, in our case, we've done this a few times, and so the files are already on the system, and it went by very quickly. We'll go ahead and click Finish. And the next thing we want to do is verify then the installation that it occurred correctly. So we're going to go down, click on the Start button. From the Start button, you've got a couple of choices and it depends on your current XP configuration. If you click on all programs, look real quick, see if you have an administrative tools folder off of all programs. If you've customized your machine, you might have done that. 
From there, you can get to the Internet Information Services snap-in that we were just talking about. If you don't have that, that's okay because you should on the control panel. So we've clicked on the start button and then gone to control panel. From the uh, list of items available in the control panel, you should see an administrative tools folder. If you're looking at the icon view where you get a window and a bunch of icons in a control panel, you can just open up the administrative folder from there. As you can see, it's the identical administrative folder. So again, we have the Internet Information Services snap-in available to us from here. However you get to it, that's fine. Let's go ahead and open up Internet Information Services. As I say, that's the snap-in that we had just installed through the Windows Components installation wizard there. So this is actually this window is called an MMC, a Microsoft Management Console. That's the technical term for the window. Within the window, we have installed a snap-in. And there's the snap-in that we're talking about, the Internet Information Services snap-in. And it's installed on our computer. If we expand by clicking on the plus sign to the left of the computer icon, then we see a folder websites. And then we also see, in the case, if you selected to choose to install SMTP, you'll see that option as well. If you did not install SMTP, it won't be there. You won't see it. It's not a problem. But you definitely should see the Websites folder. Click on the plus sign to the left of the Websites folder. Underneath of that, you should see Default Web. So by installing the web service, it's created now physical folders on our hard drive where we'll place our HTML and ASP and JavaScript and etc. documents to make up this website. So it's created a default website. It has a few pages in there, as you can see, a few folders over here on the right. Let's expand this open a little more. So uh, this folder, this is the IIS help folder. This is a virtual directory. We can tell that by the icon. That means that it doesn't actually exist in the same location as these folders do. But through this software interface, through Internet Information Services and, and how the outside world will actually see our folder structure, this folder is in the same container, in the same location, the same level as all of these folders that we see here. In fact, let's look at the physical folders. Let's come back and look at this in a second, but let's open up on our C drive. In fact, I guess we'll open this first because this tells us we're going to go into this default website here. And it's we want to know where these files and folders that we're looking at, where they're actually stored. You can see in the virtual directories, the three, the first three here are virtual directories. Here the path is actually shown to us here. But where are these files and folders actually located? Well, let's right click on this default web icon, go to properties, and from there go to home directory. The home directory shows us where those files are located. And of course, we could change that. We can click on the Browse button and we could say, no, actually we'd like this website to represent files and folders in a completely different location on the hard drive. But this is where our files and folders are currently located for this website. So what we want to do is we want to open up the, uh, Internet, or the uh, Windows Explorer and actually take a look at the C drive and show you that location, show you those files and those folders. So here's the C drive, right? Where are we looking from there? The INET pub folder. So right there's the INET pub folder. Let's open that up. Now we're seeing a INET pub. And the next folder is www.root. So we go to www.root. And there's the files that make up this website. So if we come back to our Internet Information Services window, you see these files here. There's like the images folder. Right there's the images folder. Uh, we have the IIS start.asp file. We've got that one right there. We've got the local start. We've even got some uh, image files down here. We can see we've got the warning and the print and the web. Yeah, there's the warning, the print, and the web. So what you're looking at right, is that this website is representing, is linked to, is bound to this location on your hard drive. And this then is the location where we'll be storing all the files that will make up this website. Now, let's make sure that the web service is working by opening up a web browser and going to this website. So our web browser or our web client now 
is going to connect to our web server by simply typing in the word localhost in the address. This runs the loopback address, which means that our host is going to receive the request here from our client and respond back with this page. Remember, we were just looking at this one, localstart.asp. Now, this one here was in that virtual directory, IIS help. Remember, that folder doesn't exist over here. We don't see that folder here, but when we look at the actual interface that makes up the web server, because we have this virtual directory, IIS help, it's treated just like it's in the same path as is this page up here. So that's called a virtual directory. That gives us a lot of power. We can spread our files across many servers in across the internet. The uh, two pages, the two windows that come up here, one is the documentation. And the best tool here really is the search. We can search for all types of uh, objects and uh, script code and, and whatnot, some great examples of ASP objects and, and things like that for the web services that are provided by the Windows XP and uh, ASP, Active Server Pages. And then this is just a dummy page, just basically telling us that uh, it's under construction. So that's the, the default page for that uh, particular website, which is currently our default website. And we can tell that, again, if we go back and right click on our default website and go to Properties, Actually, it's, it's going to be one step down. This is actually called by another page. You're going to see that here. If we click on Home Directory, I'm sorry, on Documents, we looked at Home Directory, right? That's the location. But Documents tells the web server what to do if the client doesn't ask for a specific document. Remember, we just went to localhost to start here. We didn't type in a page. So our client didn't specify a page to the server just wanted to connect to the server. So the server said, well, I got a request, but no specific page was requested. So what it does is it looks in that directory for this document. If that document doesn't exist, then it looks for that one. If that one doesn't exist, it looks for that one. If that one doesn't exist, it looks for that one. And that one does exist. So that page actually called this page, which uh, well, it called two pages. It called the local start page, which is the one we see here, and then also it opened up the uh, help documentation as well. So everything's working as long as we can see all of this stuff here, and uh, that means we're off to a good start. See you in the next video.